Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Network Devices Part 2. Today we're going to talk about firewalls, then we'll move on to network attached storage, and then we will have a brief discussion on some other devices that you'll find on your network. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into this session. So let's begin our discussion by talking about firewalls. Now, the firewall can be built into a router or it can be its own device. The firewall functions at multiple layers of the open system interconnect model, the OSI model. Specifically, it operates at layers 2, 3, 4, and 7. It's used to prevent or mitigate security threats. Its main purpose is to block packets from entering or leaving the network, and it does so by using two main methods. The first method is stateless inspection. In this method, the firewall will examine each and every packet that crosses through it against a set of rules. Once the packet matches a rule, the rule is enforced and the specified action is taken. The other method is stateful inspection. The firewall will only examine the state of a connection between networks. Specifically, when a connection is made from an internal network to an external network, the firewall will not examine any packets returning from the external connection. As a general rule, external connections are not allowed to be initiated with the internal network. Now the firewall is the first line of defense in protecting the internal network from outside threats. You can consider the firewall as the police force of the network. And with that, let's move on to network attached storage. Network attached storage is commonly referred to as NAS, N-A-S. It's one solution to the data storage needs of the modern world. It's a specifically designed pool of storage. Now, network attached storage is usually deployed as a network appliance. A network appliance is a, is a device that is purchased and deployed with a pre-configured operating system and software package. It is designed to perform a specific function and to do that function very well. Network appliances limit the amount of configuration that the user is allowed to perform. Now, network attached storage offers several different storage solution benefits. It's often designed and deployed with performance in mind, with some form of RAID striping and multiple connections to the network, thus increasing the possible throughput. Network attached storage is also often designed with high availability in mind with some form of RAID mirroring and redundant systems in case of equipment failure. Now, network attached storage is always designed and deployed with high storage capacity in mind. The size of the NAS is usually only limited by the budget of the purchaser. Now let's move on to some other types of devices. First up is the voice over IP phone, the VoIP phone. This uses the network and internet to provide phone service. Now the VoIP phone offers more than just normal telephone functions. It can automatically log traffic. They are often programmed with time clock applications and they also often come programmed with a simple browser. Now VoIP can reduce the cost of operating a telephone system through reduced long distance costs and also reduce cost and ease of management of the telephone system. Then there's a special type of network device called an internet appliance. These are a category of purpose-built devices that are designed to connect to a network and offer simple communication. An example would be a device that measures the amount of material in a tank and when it reaches a certain level it will send a message to reorder the necessary supply. They are usually designed to simplify a process or a procedure. Now that concludes this session on Network Devices Part 2. We talked about firewalls, and then I talked about network attached storage, and then we concluded on some other devices that you'll find on the network. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm sure I'll do another one soon.